Hello, my name is Hanna Kletrlíková. I am a research midwife from Imperial College London and PhD student from Charles University in Prague. I would like to share some results from observational study, which I have done during my work at Croydon University Hospital. As you know, obstetric anal sphincter injuries are the most severe perineal injuries sustained during vaginal delivery. They are classified as a third and fourth degree tears, and they may significantly reduce quality of life in affected women. When we first time introduced the manual perineal protection at Croydon University Hospital, we noticed very soon that its effective solution in a reducing of risk of obstetric anal sphincter injuries. If you have a look at this graph, you can see OASIS rate at Croydon Hospital between June 2016 and April 2017. The OASIS rate went from 4.6% to 0 0.4, which was amazing, but during the summer 2017, something happened and the OAC rate went up again and we didn't know why. So we started some investigation and in this study, we wanted to find out whether the Finnish manual perineal protection technique is being used according to standard teaching by clinical clinicians at Croydon Hospital. Random clinicians from labor ward were observed during their childbirth and the individual steps of the Finnish manual perineal protection technique were assessed and documented on an observation sheet. During my observation, I mostly focus on correct placement of dominant hand on a perineum using the whole length of the thumb and index finger, applying appropriate pressure and movements on a perineum, placing non-dominant hand on a baby's head and controlling the speed of delivery, see if posterior foreshad is visible, if uh, the baby is being delivered in axial traction, and if the manoperineal protection is being used during shoulders delivery. And these are our results. I have observed 62 deliveries, always managed by different clinicians between August 2017 and May 2018. The Finnish manual perineal protection technique was used by 77.4% of clinicians, which was great, but the correct technique was seen only in 47.9%. 52.1% of people made one or more deviation from standard teaching. On this chart, you can see the most common errors. 45.5% of clinicians didn't apply enough pressure on labia or perineum. 24% didn't protect perineum during the shoulders delivery. 18.2% didn't use whole length of the thumb and index finger. 9.1% of clinicians didn't control the speed of the delivery. And in 3%, the posterior foreshad wasn't visible. As you know, according to some biomechanical studies, the tension on the perineum can be reduced by 30% if using manual perineal protection correctly. So if you use only the tip of thumb or index finger, you kind of pinching the labia in one point, but you are not protecting the perineum. Also, if you not apply enough pressure on a perineum, you are not reducing the tension on a posterior foreshad, and it's not effective, and it has a kind of placebo effect. Also, if the head is being delivered very fast, the perineum doesn't have enough time to stretch and will easily break. So these are the reasons why we need to make sure 
that we use the monoperineal protection technique correctly. We also wanted to know how confident are our clinician and how they feel about the technique. So after each observation, uh, I have asked them and these are the results. So 89% of the clinicians considered a manoperineal protection technique was performed correctly. 95.9% of clinicians felt confident to use manoperineal protection technique. They didn't need any support and they didn't want any additional training. 81.6% of clinicians thought that the manoperineal protection is effective and makes a difference to risk of obstetric anal sphincter injuries. I have observed three oases cases in a woman who had a childbirth without manoperineal protection. It was statistically significant. So we can say that the Finnish manoperineal protection technique is well known and practiced at Croydon University Hospital. Manoperineal protection is effective in reducing obstetric anal sphincter injuries. But the technique does not appear to be standardized across all clinicians. So our recommendation is following. Manual perineal protection needs to be part of the mandatory training. All clinicians need to have a one-to-one -one training with specialist midwife or the doctor with a focus on theory and also on practice. The second midwife at the time of the delivery can be helpful. So the case midwife can fully focus on manual perineal protection and communication with the woman. We also recommend uh, the, to engage manual perineal protection champion midwife across the unit to support junior midwives or student and provide help and feedback in a practice. Also, please review each case of the oasis and think about the feedback and a reflection, not from the critical point of view, but from the learning point of view, because it has a huge impact on women's life and we can really make a difference. Thank you so much for your attention.